Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm working with Cody Miller on Aridia, The Paths We Dare Tread. And this is the second video in a series on the loot tiles in Aridia and how we are making them. And so if you haven't seen that video, go watch that video first. This is a really in-depth look at the spreadsheet or the structure of the spreadsheet that I've created, which we're using to basically track all of the items in the game. And I will say there are no spoilers in this video. We are using only placeholder things in this spreadsheet. This isn't the actual spreadsheet. So, but it is a representation of what data exists in the master spreadsheet. Okay, so what are we looking at here? As a reminder, we have InDesign, and in InDesign, this is what we get. We get beautiful images and text and, and icons and all of that. How do we generate all that if we wanna have hundreds of items? So the way we do that is have a spreadsheet, which includes a bunch of data, and then we use data merge to pull it all in. So that's what's happening here. And in this video, I'm just going to go through the spreadsheet and you can you can see the complexity of it. And and for me, this is really fun. I like I like getting into the nitty gritty of, of spreadsheets, but obviously I understand if this is not for everyone. OK, so each line of the spreadsheet is a single item and we want to be able to support both armor and weapons in the same spreadsheet. So sometimes there might be columns, a particular column, like, I don't know, this column over here is the hand icon column. Maybe if you're, if you have a, like a, a piece of armor, this gambeson is a piece of armor, you don't need the hand icon. We don't want the hand icon to show up right here. And therefore I leave that column blank. So that's like just a general principle of how I can build this spreadsheet to be flexible, allowing it to support both armor and weapons and other things too. We just, it's just the power of data merge. You can just leave that blank. Okay, so what do we see? First thing is just path. That's obviously a very easy way of arranging things. We have tiers of items, and this tier is used by other things to programmatically get, pull in the right images. So I'll give you an example of that. The background of the tile depends on the tier of the tile. So I'll show you that example. Look at this, this background is sort of like a straw kind of background. This is a tier zero item that you might start with. And this, if I go to the next record, this is a sort of a wooden, a wooden background. It shows it's a little, little better item. So how does InDesign know what file to pull? Well, I have this formula set up for the background. And what it says is go to this proper path on, on my computer and pull this Photoshop file called backgrounds tier underscore. And then I put in reference this cell over here, B2 dot PSD. So it knows if I, if I change this, for instance, if I change this to a one now, magically this formula is still referencing this cell and therefore it's, it's going to allow me to just update the, the tier if I want to very easily. And that's, that's sort of the overall power. That's a very simple example, but that's the overall power of this. As, as a more uh, advanced example, we can look at this. This is the dot. So the dot in the upper left is both dependent on the tier of the item. So this is a tier one item with a warrior icon, and this is a tier zero item with a warrior icon. So the, this dot up here depends on both the path and the tier. And so I'll just show you as an example, if we go to the loot or uh, next one, we'll get to the loot in a second. This is the barred icon, but with a tier zero, uh, tier zero background. So, um, this dot formula takes into account both. It says, look at both the path and the tier, and that's how we know. And the reason why this works is that I've set up the file names on my computer to, to properly match this. this. This formula would only works because of a, a second element, which is that we, we properly named the files. All the files are very organized to be able to be named in that way. Okay, we have an illustration, then we have the name, which is, the, this is just a super complicated formula to, to pull the name out of the out of the Photoshop file, which allows me to customize the name here. This is the name that actually shows up. 
Okay, let's keep going. In this area, um, we have things relevant for for weapons. So, so right here, since this is not a weapon, these gambesons are not weapons. I, this is just all blank. But you can see here we we have we do have this is the range for a weapon. This is a short sword. This is the this is the short bow. So it has a higher range. Just I mean obviously again placeholder stuff. The attribute. All, all I do here is put the name of the attribute and because of some fancy um, grep styles in InDesign, this this color can be dynamically changed. So this is a is a green sort of this teal color. And then when you look at strength, you'll notice it's a different color. The the spreadsheet, all I type in is strength and dex, but because of additional work in InDesign and some setup there and grep styles, we can get a different color. I can include a link in the description of this video to some other excellent videos that other people have put out about using InDesign and grep styles. If you happen to be a game designer and you want to use th this technique in your own games, then I'm happy to include that link and credit to the other content creators who have generated a bunch of really good educational stuff on how to use InDesign and data merge and grep styles. Okay, so let's look. This is this all this whole area is just related to the the damage thresholds and the range and stuff like that. You can see here that this area over here is for armor. So we have a defense and durability for armor, and then the particular location, these are individual Adobe Illustrator files, which are these particular icons in the lower left, and I just named them. So this is chest legs, and I just happened to name that chest legs. So a lot of getting this set up properly is not just the spreadsheet and not just the InDesign file, but also the, the file naming. Getting the file naming properly helps you stay organized. And so if, because I have a file named chestlegs.ai this works if i wanted to change it to be just legs i could just you know update this and get rid of chest and then it would just just be covering the legs because i happen to have a file named legs also because that would make sense okay so the price that's obviously in there and then a description obviously we can write that the set that it's from and then this whole area over here on the specific attack pattern. And I will go over what this code means in a separate video. It's worth it to do it in a totally separate video if you're really that interested in exactly how the attack patterns are being built from this spreadsheet. I'm happy to indulge you. I spent a long time getting this working properly. And so it's fun to talk about it for, for those of you who care. And if you don't, no worries at all. So, um, there are a few other special things that we have. So the loot gets its own little special text and that's a column just, just for that. And most items don't have this, but then the loots will use it. And then there are some special overlays that we can add just for certain special things. So for the bow, it gets a special overlay. I'll show you here. You can see the bow gets a special overlay. This is not an attack pattern. This is just, hey, go take a look at the quiver. And then quivers are just super special, different than everything else. We just have a whole overlay dealing with these attack patterns that we can customize however we want. And then the one other thing here is a, um, is a spear that has a certain range. Just as an example, other things. I mean, this is just all placeholder stuff, but this is the, the marker here. So I have a, a marker there and then the, the range and, and then the range icon. So that's, that's what this controls. And then I have a whole bunch of other helper stuff all the way over here that, <laughs> that goes on for a really long time. This is all related to the attack pattern stuff, which I'll talk about in a separate, in a separate video. But, um, I hope that gives you a sense of how we're using sort of the, the detailed look at how we're using a spreadsheet, proper file naming, and in design with some grep styles and data merge to make it all work. Thanks so much. If you have questions, please post them in the comments of this video or on the Kickstarter page. Thanks.